in this week's Glanby Ireland Dairy Focus podcast. We'll have the latest update from the Animal Health Ireland video series. We'll also get a, a research update from Chagas Moor Park on trials being conducted on white clover sward inclusions. And we'll also have a quick grassland management update as we progress through the grazing season. Firstly, let's hear the most recent update from the Animal Health Ireland video series. So why is milk recording such an excellent tool for the farmer, vet and advisor to monitor and manage the dairy herd? Well, in addition to the benefits of breeding and improving the EBI, there's some tremendous advantages from the cell check report managing somatic cell counts. So let's look at the six recordings and the advantages of each stage. So by milk recording within the first 60 days post calving, you get some fantastic information about how effective the dry cow period has been. Have you had a good cure during that period? And indeed, in that space, you also get to identify cows that have infected early and treat them and cure them and stop them becoming chronically infected. Later on in the lactation then, we have the chance to look at the trends over space and time and the recent infection reports, persistent cow reports and the problem cow reports give help in doing that. Very importantly, the last milk recording should be within 30 days of drying off and together with some bacteriology, it helps you make great decisions around your selective dry cow strategy, using less antibiotics and therefore a big help to reducing antimicrobial resistance. So let's look at the financials around this. For an investment of 15 euro per cow, say for 100 cows, you'd spend 1500 euro to milk record for the year. The benefits are 406 litres per cow from herds at milk record and that translates to 120 euro per cow or 12,000 euro for the herd. On average European countries have 87% of their herds milk recording whereas in Ireland 51% are milk recording. So in summary there's fantastic opportunities to help you manage the herd, manage your cell count and improve your profit by engaging in milk recording. Now we'll hear from Deirdre Hennessy of Chagas Moor Park to give us an update on some research that's being conducted on the importance of white clover inclusions in swards. Hello, um, I'm here to give you an update on the clover study. Uh, my name is Deirdre Hennessy, I'm a grassland researcher here in Moor Park, and this is Ellen Fitzpatrick, PhD student, who's also working on clover. Um, so in our clover study at Moor Park, we have three treatments. We have a grass only treatment getting 250 kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year, grass clover getting 150 kilos of nitrogen and grass uh, clover getting 100 kilos of nitrogen. They're all stocked at 2.74 cows per hectare. Um, so currently the cows are um, nearing the end of the sixth rotation. Uh, they're going into pre-grazing covers of uh, 13 to 1400 kilos of dry matter and they're grazing down to 4.2 centimetres. Uh, clover content uh, is heading towards peak now on the clover treatments and on the clover 150 treatment the clover content is cur currently 39.5% uh, and on the clover 100 it's almost 28%. Year to date the grass 250 treatment has grown 8.3 tonnes of dry matter per hectare and the grass clover treatments, both of them, they have grown 8.4 tonnes of dry matter per hectare. Um, Ellen's going to fill you in now on um, the milk production um, at the moment. Um, in terms of milk production, the Clover 100 treatment group are currently milking 21.9 kilos of milk. This includes uh, 1.95 kilos of milk solids and a fat percentage of 5.14% and a protein percentage of um, 3.84. The clover 150 cows are currently milking 22.33 kilos of milk. Their milk solids are 1.92 kilos. Their butter fat is 4.9 and their um, protein percentage is 3.79%. The grass 250 um, cows are currently milking 21.24 um, kilos of milk. This is based on 1.7 kilos of milk solids. Their fat percentage is 
um, 4.44 and their protein percentage is 3.56. This week our um, measurements involve carrying out an individual dry matter um, intake estimation for each of the cows. This will give us an indication of dry matter intake between each of the different treatment groups. With high grass growth rates being forecasted for the coming week, those predicted figures being 74 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day for Leinster region and 77 kilos of dry matter per hectare per day for the Munster region. So with those high grass growth rates, it's important to walk the farm more regularly so we can react quickly and make good, timely decisions around surplus grass and, and keeping quality in front of the grazing mob at all times. Pasture Base Ireland figures highlighting that average pre-grazing yields are currently too high and above target um, as an average across the region. We want to make sure that we're making good, timely decisions about taking out surplus. When we're taking out surplus and how to make that decision, your cover per cow or per livestock unit should be a key factor when making decisions about having surplus grass available on farm. And again, if that figure stands above 160 to 180 kilos of dry matter per livestock unit, there is an amount of surplus grass available to take out. And when we're taking out surplus, ideally we want to take out our worst quality paddocks paddocks with a high stem to leaf proportion and also paddocks that might have had a poor clean out or graze out in our last rotation. We want to have the opportunity to take out surplus grass at the moment as we want to take out surpluses before we move into that autumn build up period and also we want to have high quality grass when we move into that autumn building up period and building covers. So now is the ideal opportunity to get a handle on quality, taking out surpluses as the weather allows and ensuring that you're turning your cow into your target pre-grazing yield of between 12 and 1400 kilos of dry matter per hectare. For more information on any topics covered in this week's Glanbia Ireland Dairy Focus podcast, contact your local Glanbia Ireland representative or log on to glanbiaconnect.com.